Welcome to Cujo Sound and Game Audio Talk. This time, it's about Red Dead Redemption. This is the fourth and final video about Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, it's actually not really about this specific game, it's just, we're just using this game as an example while we discuss general audio setups. Here we go! Here we go! One thing that Red Dead Redemption 2 does really well is all the environmental feedback that it provides. The early reflections, the reverbs and echo around the game. Okay, a reverb is actually an echo, it's kind of like the same thing, just really fast after each other. Actually, I don't remember from acoustics class at school if there is a definition on when we go from one to the other definition, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Like, no need to nitpick on terms. Anyway, reverb in game audio is not that big a deal. Usually it's one of the easiest things to grasp if you're working with a modern engine. You mark an area, set the reverb, and it plays all three sounds in that area with that reverb. It's an entirely different thing if you want to actually have detailed and good reverb, like they have in Red Dead Redemption 2. Easy there. Here we have an open landscape, and we are going to use our repeater rifle. Now listen to the feedback and the tail of the gun, which tells us something about the size of the current environment. Now let us move to a different area, with some mountains close by, and in a not so open area any longer. Try and hear the difference here. More so we can move to a location where rocks or mountains or trees or anything else like solid material like that is right next to us. Same repeater rifle. Now let's try these three areas again with a normal gun. The open area. The mountains close by. And a not so open area with some objects close by. First of all, let's pay attention to the tail, which is different from one weapon to another, meaning that either the tail is generated by the editor, or a lot of time went into nailing how this tail should sound and different from areas to area on each gun. Now you may think, nah, in big games like this they don't mark up every area like that, do they? Like I do in my small Unity game. They, in, in AAA games, they have better tools than that, right? And I can tell you, sure, they have better tools, but yes, they do mark every area like this. All big projects that I have worked on and been fortunate enough to see under the hood use systems like this, where you both have to mark up areas and set properties for each and every one of them. Some generative and procedural calculations may be done, but everything in a game like this is under strict control all the time. Not necessarily in the same way that you would do it, or that others would do it, but I guarantee you that this game and the audio engine knows perfectly well where you are at any point in time, and every area has its own generated settings, which are probably run by a standard setup, and it has some very specific overriding properties. Like, if you want a specific forest to have a different tail than the one that the game would normally provide for you, you can set that. This area here, for instance, let's say we want to force the game to ignore the early reflections in here of the trees. We want to have an area marked like this and say, ignore early reflections in some property. That could be one way of doing it. It's basically the same as if you have 100% generated footsteps and there is one area where the result of that generation would be hollow footsteps but we want specifically it to be creaky footsteps instead, then we can overwrite this property. Jesus. The same as well for a place like this, where we want the tail of the outdoor open space to play, but a different early reflection and perhaps a small local reverb, which is short, just to give the impression of the closed space. 
we can mark this area and say we want short reverb or short early reflections or different early reflections. Reverbs, and especially long ones, can be pretty expensive to have running all the time, so the option of hard coding some assets to contain the tail is not such a bad idea when it comes to performance. Even though it may seem like a generative system and a proper reverb running all the time may be a proper nerdy option or a better aesthetic choice, but it's actually not and quite often doesn't even sound better. Some call this tails, others call it echo, some call it choir, some call it reverb, some call it the environmental report, the audio report, the ER config, the early report config, and many other things. I've seen all of these setups run and call different things when I make games myself, and I've seen a lot of projects. Let's just call it tails. Right now we have counted some different tails, but some of them are the same actually, but with different early reflections. So my take is that there is a bunch of tails fitting the environmental size, but early reflections may be calculated on the fly. Like here, you have a fairly open space, the game automatically detects that and therefore plays something like Lancaster repeater open space sky long or something like that. And then the generated early reflections shoot in a couple of directions or potentially all directions, and take that data, figures out which early reflections would be possible to hear, and then does a calculation for us like that, only when the gun is fired, to figure out which one should be heard. Let's say that there is about five different tails. That would be, that would actually be enough for a game like this. Open world, mountainous, city, valley, and forest. Those would probably cover all our needs, especially if the actual tail of this gun is played from somewhere else than the player, and then obstruction and occlusion also comes into play. That would make it possible to fire the gun in an open space, but if you're close to something, then the sound of the tail would be occluded and obstructed by that structure, like in a house or something like that, causing it to become very, very complex. The early reflections would take care of that and make sure that it would sound great, but the complexity would totally be depending on which occlusion settings there are for the given area. Now let's try the Lancaster repeater here in the city of Saint Denis in an open street without getting a wanted record all the time. It took ages to record this content. Open street here. And here's a back alley. On the docks. Some interesting results, right? Let's listen to a few different results from around the game as well. Here we have the swamps. Notice the different sounds depending on shooting into the air, to the ground, and the direct impact on a nearby tree. Now with a rifle. A Litchfield repeater. And the Lancaster repeater. And here we are in a small cabin, as we saw before, but it's open world around this cabin. Check the length of the tail, compared to the ones from the swamp, then into the ceiling. And then into the wild again. Also here, in a train tunnel. Notice how the tail, if you listen closely, it's actually the same as if you're shooting outside. Meaning it's probably using the same open world version inside this tunnel. But the reverb and the early reflections of the thing makes the whole area sound very different. I even checked if there was a difference if I fired my gun at night, but it doesn't appear that there is. 
that is really it for the series about Red Dead Redemption 2. And I really believe this series sheds some great light on some really, really interesting audio topics. Not only for this game, but on how game audio works as a whole. In a second, I'm going to turn on the usual good self-promotion ending of this series. So, because this is the last one, I might as well say it myself before we go to that. If you like this video, please like and subscribe if you aren't already. Comment on this video, please, if you have anything to say or share. And do share this video with all your game audio friends who might be interested in this material. Now say goodnight. See you in another episode from Kujo Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson signing out. Hey, you see my friend anyway? Thank you for watching Kujo Sound and Game Audio Talk. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up or even subscribe if you aren't already. Or check out the channel for a lot of other videos about game audio talk and tutorials on how to make video game audio. If you really like the content that I provide on this channel, consider subscribing to me on patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as one dollar a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this content. I would really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video. Kujo Sound, signing out.